let's apply what we've learned to draw a penguin using these vector tools. Now, since I'm going to use white in the penguin, I'm going to change the stage color to gray so we can see the white as we use it. So I'll explain that in a minute. So let's start off with this penguin. So I'm going to start off with, let's say, an oval tool. And I'm going to change the fill to black and the stroke to none. And I'll just draw an oval. And I'll use this oval shape for the body of the penguin. Now, what I can do is, is I can grab this black arrow here, and I can now approach the edge of this oval, and then I can kind of compress it. So if I do that, you can see that I can distort the vector, right? And I can stretch it out and push it in and try to get maybe a penguin-shaped uh, body for this penguin, right? So it's not so, not so round. All right. All right, that looks good. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to draw this same shape, or actually maybe what I'll do is copy this shape. So I'll do a control C on the keyboard and a control V to paste it. In this shape, you can see that the dots are selected. I'm going to change the fill to white. Now, with this fill color white, what I can do is I can get this tool here, the transform tool, the free transform tool, and you can see I've got these handlebars now, and I can make this a little bit smaller. So I can make that smaller, and you can see what I can do is, is kind of get ready to place it right over the top. So I'll do that for, let's say, the penguin's body. Now I can once again distort this, and however I want. So now you can see I've got two pieces here, this black outline and then this white. Now I might want to pull this over a little bit so it's not so uniform. So that looks good, right? So now I'll switch back to that selection tool. So there's the body, right? Um, now for the head, what I'll do is I'll get the oval tool, and I'm going to create a black head, so I'll choose that to black. Notice I have the stroke set to none, and I'll just hold down the shift key and draw a perfect little circle here, right, for the head. And one thing about vector images is that when you put two vector uh, pieces together, they merge and create one. So in other words, if I take and highlight this circle and then have it touch the black, right, and then deselect, notice that now when I click on it, it selects the whole piece as just one unit. So that'll be something that you'll have to plan for in the future. That's one of the reasons why I believe they created that this tool right here, that object drawing tool, so that you can keep them separate. So that's one thing. So what I could do is, is before I bring it down, I could, let's say, modify and group it if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it separate for now. I did Control Z to back out of that. And I'm going to make the beak. Now for the beak, I want to, I'm going to use the brush tool. I'm going to get a small brush and I'll change the color to let's say like a, a yellow, right? Whoops. And you can see here, I had this selected and it changed the circle to yellow. I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to change that back to black and deselect by clicking on the background. And then I'll grab my paintbrush and change the color to yellow. And so now I want to draw the beak and that's the beak, and I'm not too pleased with that. So what I'll do is, is I'll zoom in and see if I can make that better. Maybe what I'll do is use the line tool and draw a yellow line. I'll select it. I'll make it thinner, let's say two. And then what I could do is, is I could take this line and curve it shape it like that. And maybe now that could be a different kind of beak. So I'm not so sure that I like that either, but you get the picture, right? 
So I'm going to leave those separate so that they don't merge together. I'll zoom out back to 100%. And now all I need are the, let's say, the wings, right, or the arms. For those, what I can do is I can also use the oval tool. I'll set that to none, set the color to black, and draw one piece, maybe just kind of alter it a little bit. And what I can do is, is copy that. So I'll copy Control C and Control V, and now I have the other one, and I could just flip this. So I could use Modify, Transform, Flip Horizontal. So now I have this piece and this piece. Notice how I don't have them touching because I don't want them to merge and basically um, merge and cut a hole into each other. So once again, if I do that and then deselect and then click and drag it, you can see it's all one piece. So that's why I'm doing Control Z on the keyboard now to back out of that. So that's why I'm keeping them separate. Now I need the, the feet, the penguin fins or so let's see here. We'll, uh, we'll make those yellow. And how are we going to do that? OK, so I'll do that also with a fill. And or I could do it with a pencil and then fill it. Let's try that. That should be interesting. So let's take the pencil tool. And we'll just go like this. And we'll say, and we'll draw right something like that. Right, and then what I can do is I'll double click on this. I'm not really enjoying that, that's not the best. Right, move this, we can move this a little bit. I'll double click on it, change the color to black, then I'll get my paint bucket and paint the inside yellow. Now once that's done, I can double click on the back outline and then just delete it. Now this is kind of big for the feet. So what I'll do is I'll use my free transform tool and make them a lot smaller. So now I can just copy that and paste it. I'll use the arrows on the keyboard, hold down the shift key and the arrows on the keyboard to move it around. That's called nudging, right? And there we go. I could select both and make them smaller. And you can see here that now, let me get the black arrow and just move them into position. And so now I have all of the pieces of my vector penguin created.